Before we start, I would like to state something to the members of the FE Corps Board of Directors. In the following video, all FE Corps faces and all FE Corps logos in this video have been replaced by my own artist rendering or marked over with other sensors. Please realize the necessity of this action is not for legal reasons as there are none, but because of the not truly functional reporting system on YouTube, which you have admittedly abused. The purpose of this is to avoid more fraudulent copyright strikes and fraudulent privacy strikes submitted by FE Core who is trying to censor factual information. So if your intent is to watch this video seeking stuff that you can tag, you can stop here. However, if you are interested in the ever increasing mass of facts about FE Core that I have assembled, then feel free to continue. Additionally, in the description below is a copy of the MP4 video file you are watching right now. I recommend that all viewers watching download this video. In the event that this video is taken down as the result of more fraudulent copyright and privacy claims from FE Core, I authorize the widest dissemination of this video unedited across any and all platforms by any and all users. Normally it would suffice on social media to say that fair use rules and privacy laws are a given. Among social media and traditional media viewers, even common understanding is typically clear. However, there are always exceptions. Those who refuse to read the laws then demand freedom of speech and expression while hypocritically and wrongfully attempting to silence those with the same right leave themselves open for fraudulent conduct. Wer lesen kann hat den Vorteil is a German expression which means the advantage goes to those who read. Due to the copyright and privacy claims which were fraudulently and maliciously imposed on my material by the FE Core Board of Directors for admitted non-privacy or copyright related reasons, some things need to be clearly stated before we continue. So get your coffee or beer, bust out some popcorn, and get comfortable for the longest opening legal disclaimer possibly in YouTube history. First, we will handle the privacy issues. There were seven total privacy complaints against my channel, and while the complaints themselves do not detail or identify the claimant, FE Corps President Mike Cavadaugh is the chair of a seven-member board. Do you need a calculator? Not to mention, he specifically detailed to me that he ordered his board members to submit claims against me. In relation to the privacy complaints, FE Corps President Mike Cavadaugh stated to me, after you filter out the slander, insults, threats, and intimidation attempts in his messages, that his reason for doing this is that the publicly available About Us page on the FE Corps website was only intended for FE Corps' use, which, if so, should not be a page facing the public. This should be common sense. If it were somehow a mistake that the About Us page was open to the public unintentionally, in the interest of privacy to his board, I am sure this would have been quickly removed after the release of my video. However, it is still there, as it has been for nearly two years. Now please allow me to share with you the benefits of reading the actual laws and inform you of what privacy infringement actually is as it relates to this situation. In order for a person's privacy to be considered violated when discussing photographs, it must first be established if the photograph or likeness was created without the person's consent or implied consent. And second, it must be established if the person had a reasonable expectation of privacy with the use of that photo, even if specific consents were given. I displayed the public facing About Us page for FE Core, which is publicly accessible on the FE Core website and can be arrived at even by search engine. This page is not secured behind any barrier requiring unique access such as membership, password, or decryption, nor is it a part of a limited proprietary release from FE Core to specific users other than me, meaning that any visitor to the FE Core webpage to include bots and search engines will be able to view the page and its contents so is therefore intended for public consumption by FE Core. As a matter of fact, you can Google the names of the board members and the image results will show those same images among others, yet I don't hear FE Core filing suit against Google. To a reasonable person, which is what a court of law considers, it must be assumed that the photos given to the FE Core web designer were given freely and with the consent of the individuals photographed. Since, as stated before, 
FE Corps has had the images of its staff publicly displayed on its website for nearly two years of its existence, and apparently without complaint by the board members photographed and displayed. Now applying these facts to FE Corps, let me use the FE Corps president Mike Cavanaugh as an example victim in this case. Mike has already stated that he is not the web designer for the FE Corps website. So, if Mike found his image on the public facing about us page of the FE Corps website without his consent, this would be a violation of his privacy. Then Mike would file a claim against the FE Corps web designer who put it there and he would win. The now sued FE Core web designer, if he thought that he was acting in good faith and was told consent was given, then he would file suit against the person who gave him the photo, and he would win. However, those viewing the page, having broken no law by viewing the public facing about us page of FE Core's website, have the right to use that page and its imagery for the purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, or research under fair use. Meaning, privacy violations relating to publicized media are filed against the distributor of that material, which would be FE Core and not the viewer or reporter, unless the viewer or reporter obtained them under criminal circumstances such as hacking or leaking. So, in short, if there is a privacy infringement claim to be made, from using the public facing about us webpage by those who are actually shown on that webpage, then it should be made by the privacy violated board members pictured on the page charging FE Core for making those photos public. Now we'll move on to the copyright strike against my FE Core Can't Laser video and my channel. There are three opinions as to what this claim actually was. So I will cover all three since it is not detailed in the copyright strike against my channel. And no, specifics were not given other than FE Core Incorporated submitted the strike. First, let me present one explanation which was given publicly by FE Core Board Secretary Karen B. regarding the copyright strike. Anyway, could you get a little bit into the whole FE Core versus Slice Parkane situation? What exactly happened? If you want. Um, okay. Well, basically, he started making videos about us using our logo without our permission, which is against uh, YouTube's terms of service. Um, so we filed a complaint. It's pretty simple. You know, and all the stuff that he's saying, it's like, it's all just ridiculous stuff anyway. It's... Mm -hmm. I don't know. We're just tired of um, dealing with these people, so now we're just going to deal with them the best way we know how. So, yeah, with him using our company name and our logo and changing our logo, that is definitely copyright infringement, and he could lose his channel over that. Right. Okay. First, a clarification. Nowhere in the YouTube Terms of Service does it say that using an untrademarked logo is a copyright infringement or against YouTube's Terms of Service. Nowhere. I looked. But this brings up opinions one and two. Number one, the use, and number two, the modification of the FE Core company logo, which in the eyes of the law are actually two separate things. First, Fair use allows me to use the not registered trademark and not copyrighted FE Core company logo for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, or research, and is not an infringement of copyright. This is stated in U.S. Code 17, Section 107, Limitations on Exclusive Rights, Fair Use. Second, the modification of the not registered trademark and not copyrighted FE Core company logo is an artistic expression and is perfectly within my rights under the Constitution of the United States and fair use. If it were a registered trademark with the U.S. Patent Office, there would be other details to consider, such as if it were a malicious modification, which it wasn't, or if it was modified enough no longer to be mistaken for the original trademarked logo. But again, it is not a registered trademark with the U.S. Patent Office and is not copyrighted with the U.S. Copyright Office, so I won't waste your time anymore explaining those additional criteria. Opinion number three, the use of information in the official public release 
of the laser test experiment's results, which is actually suggested by the thumbnail in the fraudulent copyright strike notice on my channel. And it has nothing to do with the not registered trademark and not copyrighted FE Core company logo, which questions why FE Core members would even discuss it. The laser experiment PDF is neither copyrighted nor was it a restricted distribution of work. It was made publicly available for review and scrutiny. FE Core has stated on several occasions that their results are provided to the world. This time, as literature, fair use, again, allows me to utilize portions of this work as long as the portions used are relevant to the specific commentary or criticism that I offered, and that I don't attempt to claim ownership of the original work as my own. This is also in conjunction with the Berne Convention, which basically extends that same right to the majority of countries around the world. The Berne Convention was also agreed to by Hungary, the Netherlands, and the United States, which are the three nations primarily associated with this document. Every piece that I showed of the publicly released document in the FE Core Kant laser video with regards to that document was individually justified in my commentary, and so it is justified for fair use. The only time under the mentioned circumstances and condition could I be considered in breach of copyright law would be if I were using the non-registered or non-trademarked logo or the literature in a fashion which I was either claiming it as my own or in some way impersonating that I were speaking as or on behalf of the owner, which I have never done. And to further support my statements, once again, FE Core has no registered copyrights on anything with the U.S. Copyright Office. You can look this up at https colon forward slash forward slash cocatalog.loc.gov. This means that the U.S. Copyright Circular 33 and the U.S. Copyright Circular 66 do not protect the content to include photographs, literature, and visual works willfully distributed to the public by FE Core. And so goes back to U.S. Code 17, Section 107, Limitations on Exclusive Rights, Fair Use. FE Core also has no registered trademarks on anything with the U.S. Patent Office. You can search for that at http colon forward slash forward slash tmsearch.uspto.gov. This means that the not registered and not trademarked logo from FE Core is not protected under trademark law in the United States, but is rather a work of art of which the usage for criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, or research is covered by U.S. Code 17, Section 107 for fair use. Modification for creative purposes, as long as there is no assumption of ownership of the original work, is also covered by U.S. Code 17, Section 106 and 106 Alpha, and fair use, and the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America. For the reasons outlined to me by FE Core President Mike Cavanaugh, the privacy claims were submitted against my material because he, Mike Cavanaugh, President of FE Core, is of the opinion that the information on the FE Core's public website are for the use of FE Core and its supporters only. It was also stated that the privacy claims were submitted because he claims I am a disinformation channel making defamatory or slanderous statements, which, even if that were true, is neither a privacy nor a copyright claim. Not to mention, absolutely no evidence was ever presented by FE Core that the information in any of the three videos affected was a lie, which is required for claims of fraud, slander, and defamation under the law in the United States. So FE Core President Mike Cavanaugh and his board are initiating false claims due to their false interpretation of the law. I have had to endure a string of harassing emails with threatening, belittling, and defamatory content direct from FE Core President Mike Cavanaugh. His emails containing threats to my channel, unfounded accusations, and insults, all declaring his intent to shut down my and other channels in order to stop the flow of facts which I found and reported about FE Core. All this after being demanded by Mike Cavanaugh to do my own research into his company in the first place. So that leaves one to question. How do I continue? 
Even though the law is on my side, there are those who wish to defame me and submit false strikes against my material only as they have the ability to do so with a broken tool within YouTube. Well, the answer is simple. As I stated in the beginning of this video, all material, which has thus far been subject of false strikes against me, such as the use of public test results from FE Core, media from FE Core, the About Us page from FE Core, and the use of the not registered and not trademarked FE Core logo, will be replaced with my own artist rendering, and or will be censored to not be seen. But not without making this point first. FE Core the claimed not flat earth corporation must have given permission to use the public test results from FE Core, the footage from FE Core, the about us page from FE Core, and the logo from FE Core without restriction, privacy, or copyright strikes to dozens of flat earth channels, as their channels have been untouched by the recent slew of strikes issued by FE Core. And the not flat earth corporation of FE Core has also just recently donated paid non-member memberships for FE Core itself to the Flat Earth Group Globusters as an incentive for Flat Earthers to make claims supporting Flat Earth on the Flat Earth YouTube channel Globusters. So, y'all still with me? <laughs> okay. So welcome to the redacted version of my fraudulently removed This Is FE Core video, which has now been retitled to the FE Core Director's Cut. And yeah, look at your playback timer. It's longer than the previous release. The video that you're about to see is an objective view of FE Core. Please note that nothing of what I'm about to discuss is an opinion, but rather public fact. For those who have donated money or equipment to FE Core under the hopes that they will be able to write those donations off as charity on their taxes, pay close attention to this opening chapter. Oh, and as always, feel free to check my work. This is the publicly displayed IRS form 990 for tax year 2014 of the American Red Cross. The American Red Cross is counted as one of the largest nonprofit organizations in the country. So certainly if I were showing you this illegally, I would have much to fear. This document is publicly available on the redcross.org website for public inspection. It even says so on the document. I and several others have requested these documents from the nonprofit organization FE Core. Documents which Mike Cavanaugh, president of FE Core, is withholding from individual or public release by using a high fee, other than the copy and postage fees, as a scare tactic. FE Core president Mike Cavanaugh has publicly declared that he will impose this fee in a discriminatory manner only against those which he calls trolls which breaks an array of business and equal rights and constitutional laws in itself. He has also stated that he will require a yet undisclosed amount of personal information of anyone requesting before considering fulfilling the request, which he also does not have the right to do so. But don't take my word for it. This is him saying it. Okay. So another question. Um, <laughs> oh God. Why does FE Corps demand $100 for public information? What? What? Well, the, you know, <laughs> I can address that. <laughs> uh, we have been um, uh, bothered by trolls a lot, and it's easy for me to spot them who they are and what their intentions are. And there is a law in place, or at least regulations in place, that allow us to charge for that information. But I only do it with trolls. Because, I, you know, these people are hiding behind their anonymity and uh, are basically just out to cause trouble and we have we, we we are within our rights to request user information before we actually give that information if they don't supply us with that information then we have no reason to trust they are even a u.s citizen right oh okay so what he's okay demand a hundred dollars for 
um, the information that we're supposed to release publicly. Okay, yeah, and, and you're right, Mike. And, that's exactly. Uh, and, right. and by and by the way, the 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 information they are referring to is documents that have not even been submitted yet. You know, and it's easy to check that because you can see at the IRS our tax exemption status is not been approved yet. So. People asking for those documents while the IRS states that we're not in that phase yet are just dumb. Yeah, I know. They had, you had IFERS demanding these document, you know, documents, what, as early as, you know, November. Yeah, yeah I, I know that we are absolutely within our right to be able to do that, to cover administrative rights, our costs, I mean. Uh, NASA does it with a FOIA. Um, any public... Uh, uh, entity is fully within yeah. their rights because it's, well, it's let, let me make clear that i you know i don't usually charge that fee if somebody just asks me the simple question of why those documents are not public yet i will just answer that right. but as soon as i see notorious trolls contacting me demanding that they get that information you know i just yeah, put up a wall it. and say yeah, Wait, and you know, so, send, me, send, send me your identification so I know you're a U.S. citizen that I have to comply with, and then you have to pay for administrative costs. That's right, it, and that's if we choose to do that. And and frankly, Mike said we probably won't, but you know, on some people, you know, you're going to give us a hard time about it. We are we're going to give you a hard time right back because we are 100% well within our rights to charge administrative fees um, to be able to do this because nothing comes for free. Um, you know, whether we have to hire somebody or do it ourselves, uh, you know, anybody that thinks that, you know, even in certain capacities that we don't have the right to be compensated for our time and efforts, we absolutely do, even though so far nobody has actually, you know, it, taken any of that compensation. And, you know, that's probably going to be something that is, long, you know, far into the future. And again, we are not, we are not in this to make any money. We're not paying ourselves any salary, um, even though by all rights, we technically would have the right to do that. But we, you know, this isn't about a, a business for us to make a living off of. This is about trying to get to the bottom of the truth. It's as simple as that. Okay. Yes. So we have another question. Uh... First, regarding the fees, I'm going to play two slides here from the IRS and the IRS website. Please feel free to pause and read them before we continue. If I requested the documents and was in need of a printed hard copy, then I would be only required to offer a mailing address. And it doesn't even need to be mine. The only fees associated with this request, which I'm required to pay, as outlined by the IRS, are a 20 cent per page copy fee and the amount of real postage given to the address. And if FE Corps actually had an FE Corps office at its business address in Indiana, I would be able to go there and request the documents on the spot and not even be required to show my ID. That's it. The last time that Mike Cavanaugh actually acknowledged my request of the documents from him, he stated to me, I am not going to give you that. It has information solely intended for the IRS, which is a sharp declaration itself that FE Corps President Mike Cavanaugh is again breaking the law by ignoring the rules and regulations regarding the public disclosure of documents in a nonprofit organization. So in short form, he is breaking IRS regulations, federal and state nonprofit regulations, federal and state privacy regulations, and of course the Constitution of the United States of America. But why would he do such a thing? Well, Let's go back to the Red Cross. Item D on the 990 declares the organization's EIN number, basically a serial number identifying the specific organization to the IRS. This number is for public review and applies to all companies and organizations in the United States, non or for profit. If I go onto the IRS website and search that EIN number, I will find the American Red Cross there. What this means is the American Red Cross has lawfully filed their tax documentation and is therefore registered with the IRS. Looking on the FE Corps website, there is no link for the public to view the IRS Form 990. In fact, there's no mention of it at all. There's also no mention of the EIN number on any of their web pages. But FE Corps President Mike Cavanaugh did show the company EIN willingly on my live discussion with him. So since we're here searching things, I will punch in the EIN number for FE Corps. 
Again, I'm not going to show it to you in order to not get another bogus strike against my channel. Though, by law, it is public information, and Mike did intentionally and willingly show it near the end of my live stream with him. But as you can see, no results came back. Let me go ahead and put in the EIN number of an LLC that a friend of mine and I created a couple years ago. But what does this all mean? Well, first, currently I have no reason to believe that the number that he showed me was fake. None at all. And I know for a fact that the number that I have for the company that I started is also not fake. But what I can say is for the last two tax cycles, which FE Core has been around, absolutely nothing has been submitted to the IRS except for the request for tax exemption status. No files for extension, no budgets or finance information, nothing. Otherwise, there would have been a result because that EIN would now be registered at the IRS. Now, how do I know what this means? Simple. A few years back, my friend and I were going to start our own website building business. One of the first things you get when you register a business with your state is an EIN number. However, we never did anything with the company as it started to become easier for folks to build their own websites for cheaper. Hence, we stopped the idea while it was still in the planning phases. So, since there were no earnings, there was nothing submitted to the IRS. Since nothing was submitted to the IRS, the EIN number never got registered with them. So my EIN, which is perpetually mine, will not come up on the IRS site search. Not to mention, this is all explained quite well on the IRS website. So, FE Corps President Mike Cavanaugh has engaged in illegal scare tactics, illegal discrimination tactics, and several other violations of the law which he agreed to follow, just to not say that the proper reporting to the IRS still hasn't occurred, and to not answer to the people and corporations who have donated money and equipment to FE Core, who are now in threat of not getting their money back by tax write-offs. Many already know the conclusion that FE Core is a flat earth organization which by motivation and mantra is intent on swaying public opinion and convincing the public that government organizations are lying to them and nearly every aspect of modern and historical science has in some way attempted to control the populace with lies. FE Corps facilitates this by having an all flat earther staff performing only experiments to attempt to substantiate flat earth claims while producing only opinion based results by ignoring all natural facts as the results. FECore.org has also been party to promoting the flat earth conferences and has even held at least one panel during these conferences. All of this is the very definition of propaganda. The drive of FE Corps is to promote and distribute propaganda against established institutions such as the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, and the United States Geological Survey, or USGS, as well as education in general regarding astronomy, mathematics, earth sciences, and history. Such activity is in direct violation of Article 2, Item C of the Articles of Incorporation document stating, No substantial part of the activities of the corporation shall be carrying on propaganda. FE Corps filed this on 7 December 2017. FE Corps' activities could also be seen as a violation of that same item as it continues to forbid attempts to influence legislation which aiming to discredit and or dismember or affect the Congress regulated funding of government agencies such as but not limited to NASA, the NOAA, and the USGS is an attempt to do that very thing. Their experiments are designed to allow their opinion to be the conclusion and despite their attempts to silence, defame, and even slander their objective critics, all of their results have been quite well identified as fraudulent in painstaking detail. During my discussion with the FE Corps president and flat earther Mike Cavanaugh, he held me responsible for the researched conclusions which folks have shared about FE Corps on my channel during live hangouts. Yet he refused to hold board members of FE Corps responsible when speaking as a representative of FE Corps or as a pundit for flat earth claims, which FE Corps was founded to substantiate. 
in no way will I nor can I be held responsible for the opinions of others shared on my channel, which is transparent fact. However, those speaking in the name of FE Core, as members of the board or otherwise, are responsible for their statements about the company's activities and goals when stating so. First, let me start off by saying, in the state of Indiana, yes, FE Core is a registered nonprofit. But that's about all you can get out of a general surface level online search. Achieving this status is nothing more than documents and fees were sent and accepted by the state of Indiana. This is by far not an acknowledgement of the legitimacy to FE Core's goals and principles, nor their adherence to the rules and guidelines of a nonprofit organization. This is a name and registration purchase of no particular depth. I wanted to do my own research further in FE Core with Mike's assistance so that I could possibly correct anyone on my channel should they try and convince me of something untrue. But Mike refused to send me a copy of the PDF document packet which he displayed live during our discussion. This PDF package is a point of contention in that discussion and this would have helped my research. Mike refused stating I am not going to give you that. It has information in it solely intended for the IRS. However, IRS Form 990 and the 1023, which are required by the IRS to be made publicly available with, without, or even awaiting 501c3 status, have not been made available to me or the public. An online search for any 990 submitted by FE Core, which should have been annually, yielded zero results. So this forced me to do my own research, given that which is publicly available about the conception and stated goals of FE Core. As simple as it may seem, the FE Core logo is a declaration of Flat Earth in itself. FE, which is a commonly accepted acronym for Flat Earth or Flat Earther, CORE is spelled as C-O-R-E, meaning the center of an object or a group. It can also mean the central belief of an individual or group. The name is often stated as Field Engineers CORE. However, that spelling in that case would be C-O-R-P-S, with such examples as the Corps of Engineers and the Marine Corps. The symbol used in the FE CORE logo aside from having nothing to do with field engineering, is actually a geometric illustration which was introduced by Steve Torrance, co-founder of FE Core, board member of FE Core, and Flat Earther. This design was of Steve Torrance's Magnetic Flat Earth, a 3D model that he used in that claim. A further illustration of this form is shown on the FE Core Facebook page alongside one of the designs that was used in Steve Torrance's video. So alone, the name and logo display clearly that FE Core is a Flat Earth organization, supporting the Flat Earth cause and identifying itself as the core proponents with the intent to accept donations without tax obligations. And if successfully achieving 501c3 status, this means that your tax dollars will be funding them by way of exemption. But of course, if this was just a thing about the logo, there would be no need in making this video. So let's examine the conception of FE Core and the individuals involved. Starting with the FE Core president, Mike Cavanaugh himself. Listen for a moment to Mike explain his motivation and conception of FE Core. So could you take a couple of minutes and just time it to kind of tell us how did you figure this whole thing out that, you know, we don't live on a spinning orbiting space pair? Um, well, it, uh, it happened uh, for me. Uh, it, it took quite a while for me to accept it. Um, I had uh, a friend here in the Netherlands who was uh, investigating the, the flat earth. And uh, I, f I thought he was ridiculous, of course, like uh, most people do. I was I was watching um, 
uh, Rob Skiba do a do a breakdown of the Apollo program on YouTube, you know, and I, I got so extremely pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I I almost threw my shoe at the television, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know that that was that was basically the moment that that you know that I I got so mad with myself, you know that that I started that you know why did I believe that horse shit? <laughs> <laughs> now guys like uh, my my dad for example, you know he's a hardcore NASA believer still is you know even with his son being the president of a flat Earth organization, but. <laughs> You're, you're saying, okay, you know, this is, you know, we've been lied to and, and that sort of thing. How, how long, mm-hmm. how much time between there and when you decided that you were going to, you know, start and, and kind of found this, this organization at the Corps? Well, um, I, um, as soon as I started accepting um, uh, that it was uh, a, a very, very uh, great possibility, then I started l- looking up um, prominent figures in in flat Earth, their, at least their videos, and and watch uh, their materials. You know, and I'm I, uh, I I I landed on Dr. Zach's page, and I saw his um, video about the laser test that, that they did or were planning at that stage. And I also saw that Steve Torrance was doing the animations for um, uh, for mo- most of the video. And then I went over to Steve's channel and I saw that Steve was making 3D animations of um, uh, the AE uh, model uh, with JPL Horizons uh, uh, data, you know, the, all the stars and all the planets and all the suns and uh, or all the sun and the moon. All the positions on the map were based on actual data and that was actually something that I was looking for. So I got in contact with Steve and Zach and we started... Um, you know, uh, modeling uh, and investigating and uh, et cetera, et cetera, doing some experiments. And that was just the three of us, you know, and, and we were uh, discussing many times that uh, it, 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 it was a good idea to expand the group and maybe um, uh, uh, do something together, you know, that it was still no real plans to start an official organization, but just getting some heads together and trying to crack uh, the the tough nuts in in the in this um, dilemma of the flat earth so to speak and um, well that 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 started to grow pretty fast we um, we uh, opened a Facebook uh, chat group uh, for it and um, uh, got in contact with uh, uh, Dave Mars for example and uh, other guys in flat earth Rick Hummer and um, uh, then. On one day, Zach said to me, uh, "Maybe it's a good idea to make something official." And you know that got me thinking. And uh, you know, what are our possibilities? And would it be a good idea? And how do we um, how do we uh, create such an organization? What are, what would be our goal? Um, and what um, um, stumble blocks do we need to watch out for? And um, well, that's the the rest is history, I guess, because uh, I think in October of last year we decided to do it, and we got um, uh, Bob and Jaron and me, Sandor, Steve, and and Rick together, and uh, we started Efficor. Oh, that's awesome, man! And that, and that was a big announcement at the conference, conference obviously, in, in Raleigh, North Carolina. Was was uh, you know this group has formed and any kind of the purpose of it. And, you know, what was on the horizon and some of the experiments that were going to be conducted and the funding. So clearly, FE Core was conceived by a flat earther who was convinced to be a flat earther by a video poorly attempting to discredit NASA with an opinion and scripture based narrative. Mike Cavanaugh with Zach went on to recruit other flat earthers for the organization which now became FE Core. For those who have often stated to me, what is the harm in somebody believing in flat Earth? Yeah, well, and here's the thing. You know, what are they so afraid of? If they're so sure that Earth is a ball, why are they so afraid of people like us getting together and investigating that claim? What's the big deal? Well, if you were a normal company, most people wouldn't care. But being a non-profit organization, 
expecting tax relief from the very same government which you are trying to prove is lying to the populace by producing wrong or deliberately false information based on a bias and not science, while, as that group, making false copyright and privacy claims against the individuals who factually critique those false results and your organization, which is actually you seeking protection from the very same government you're trying to say is lying to everybody, all because a guy believed what another guy said on YouTube. Sure, what's the harm in that? Now listen to FE Core board member and avid flat earther from the Globusters Flat Earth YouTube group, Bob Nodell, as he goes into detail of the goals of FE Core during one of the Flat Earth conferences. There you have it. Okay, so that's pretty much for this presentation. So what's on the horizon? I said I would, I would mention a little bit more about the um, Field Engineers Core group that we, has just recently been formed, and we are going to be doing lots of experiments with uh, very high-end DOD specified ring laser gyros, mechanical gyroscopes, laser interferometers, uh, MEMS accelerometers, <laughs> all of these will be used to prove that there not only is there no curvature to the earth, there is no forward motion to the earth, as well as uh, the absolute existence of the ether that Einstein eliminated with his special theory of relativity. We will experimentally show that the ether is rotating around this plane at about 15 degrees per hour, and that's about the only thing that's moving because these, this is the dielectric energy that's coming from the, scar, the stars and the sky above us. This was actually measured over 100 years ago by Sanyak, and uh, many experiments were done uh, back then that we are going to be redoing in the uh, Field Engineer Core Group. Uh, we'll be redoing the Sanyak's experiments, the Michelson-Morley, Michelson-Gale, Aries failure, and we will be carrying them out with our state-of-the-art 21st century computerized laser precision test equipment through the Field Engineers Core Group. And we will be bringing out new inventions uh, that they're being developed to be used as tools to model what we have learned and speculate our cosmology to be. And now let's listen to co-founder and signatory to the Articles of Incorporation for FE Core and Flat Earther, Rick Hummer, as he announces the formation of FE Core at the Flat Earth Conference in 2017. Many of you may know a guy by the name of Mike Cavanaugh. Okay. Speaking of Mike, well, this guy reached out to me and said, I got an idea. I'm like, okay. And he, I found out he's got a bunch of ideas. And I started seeing the work he was doing. The next thing, we're talking a lot. And I started talking to this guy named, uh, chatting back and forth with Steve Torrance. And then this guy named Dr. Zach. And then these other guys jumped in. And then these gals jumped in. And it turned into this big thing. And it's turned into this thing called FE Core. Well, what is that? And I'm proud to announce that there's some major stuff happening at the real, truly official level now. And everyone can be a part of it to where we actually go and do exactly what we should do and erase the dogma in science. Go ahead and roll the video. Yes, FE Core is happening. And I want to bring some guys up. If you are here and you are part of FE Core, if you are seriously part of this, everybody come up. Bob Nodell, Jaron, Dee Dee, where'd you go? I know you're here. Where'd you go? Karen, where are you at? You guys got to come up. This is, a, this is a group. We've been working on things kind of quietly, not telling everybody. You guys can't talk while I'm on this thing. There we go. Okay. These guys, and I'll, I'm going to let Bob talk for a second and, and Jaron as well. Uh, this whole project, about a year, I would say a little over a year, I, I had called Jaron and we had discussed some, some uh, tests that we wanted to do. Rob and I had done the Lake Michigan test. Then we got invited to go down to Victor Brewer. Where's Ski back? You back there, brother? Okay. 
And we, Rob called me and said, we're going to go do these balloon tests. I'm like, are you serious? I want to go. He's like, yeah, we're going to go. We became balloon chasers. It's a phenomenal experience. And you're not going to see other people having the type of emotion and drive than what you see in this group right here, in the group that are overseas. So I want to say Steve Torrance, Dr. Zach, Sandor. If I'm missing anybody, tell me. Mike Cavanaugh, obviously Mike Cavanaugh. This is who FE Core is going to be and who we are. And if you want to learn more, if you want to learn more, go to FECore.org. Send an email, FECore.org. The website is up. All right. Without further ado, once again, FE Core is official. It's happening. And uh, look out. Look out, science with a capital S, because we're bringing the little S in. And we're going to observe. And we're going to second guess. And we're going to check. And we're going to collect data. And you guys can all be a part of it. So learn more at fecore.org. Send an email. Get involved. Thank you, guys. Before we go any further on this subject, let us listen to Mike Cavanaugh read off the carefully crafted yet somewhat canned FE core mission statement. Our mission is not to prove that the government is a fraud or to have any government organization shut down, nor do we have any intention on lobbying to change litigate, le legislation. We have not committed fraud of any kind. There is no proof of fraud being committed. This is a defamatory statement. FE core is an organization of individuals dedicated to accuracy, discovery and application in scientific research. EFICOR is unique among researcher groups because we are independent of outside control. As individuals performing research, we realize by forming this group and inviting you to participate, we can greatly expand the scientific body of knowledge. We believe there are many discoveries to be made which have an enormous potential to benefit everyone on Earth. EFICOR is doing experiments to collect unbiased data to submit for the public for review and discussion. We do not have we do not and have not participated in spreading of any propaganda. We are strictly a data driven organization. The mission statement which you just heard is a wide departure from their conception and goals, yet claims to be all about the science. Their entire board and staff consists only of flat earthers seeking to prove only their flat earth claims. FE Core boasts to be of field engineers, as stated, a collective operation of field engineers researching Earth, however, none of whom are engineers in the fields being displayed or tested. FE Core board member and avid Flat Earther from the Globebusters Flat Earth YouTube group Bob Nodell highlighted the lack of engineer qualifications of the FE Core members with this non concise dismissal. Of the term engineer during the FE Core online board of directors statement. What licensed engineers does FE Core have on staff to be able to use that name worth addressing? Okay, great. Um, yeah, we can address that. Um, no, the word engineer is not regulated. Um, an engineer, um, you know, if you're you're speaking in terms of uh, engineers have to have specific degrees or anything like that. Um, that's probably what most people accept. And yes, uh, uh, we have many degreed engineers on staff, but um, there are many forms of engineering. And so the use of the word engineer is not uh, something that is re regulated. Uh, or if you're in the case of uh, George, um, he thinks that uh, everybody has to be a member of the Professional Engineer Society to be able to be considered an engineer. Nothing could be further from the truth um, and in fact, you don't even have to have a degree to be an engineer. Um, engineers, you know, you could run a train and be called engineers. So uh, the, the short answer to your question is absolutely not. But believe me when I tell you that uh, everybody on this board uh, and most of the people in FE Corps are credentialed engineers and have every right to use that term. Okay. Mike Cavanaugh is the president of FE Corps and yet passively assumes no responsibility for the published results of tests, which is the actual function of FE Core. Okay, now, 
there are two photographs inside of the, the, the document that you guys released. Um, and those two photographs, there's two photographs of some kind of laser hitting a large grid target, you know, like a sail. Um, is that the results of those two tests? No, no that's just to showcase. Because uh, those were we, shorter range, right? No, there was, yeah, there was uh, pretty close by, uh, I think, 20 meters or something. Okay, now, did why did you not release photographs of the of the actual laser at this 20, 20 something kilometer uh, uh, distance, why did you not release photographs in those in that results document? Well, not then there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for that. And you know, the, the, the night we went out to, uh, to get those um, measurements, when we got those measurements was actually not intended to actually be an actual measurement. I was just going out there to test if the GPS system was actually targeting the laser in the right uh, uh, direction. So and we did went out with, with my phone and the P900 and we were managed, we managed to, you know, to get some on camera and some, we, we took some pictures. Okay. But fortunately for that night, because it was a perfect night, we, you know, we should have brought um, more massive camera gear, definitely. Okay, so it's safe to say that Although you, you state that there was a target that was hit uh, and which would have basically confirmed all of your work, um, you don't have photographs of it. Well, we do have video and photographs of it, but you know they're, they're made with a P900 and the P900 is not the best camera that you, uh, that you can have at those locations. Okay, are these, are these photos and videos, regardless of quality, uh, ever going to be released? Yes, yes, we're, um, you know, there's a, a massive dump of um, media that, uh, that we're going to release pretty soon. I hope we're waiting for a special occasion. And uh, one of the... No responsible for the content of the website, which is the public face of FE Core. The only thing that we've changed on our website is, and we were made aware of that by another 501c3, is that we, we mentioned on our website that we're already registered as a 51C3 and that was obviously not true. That was a mistake made by the web editor and that was corrected into that we're in the process of becoming a 51C3. Okay. No responsibility for blocking of visitors and viewers of FE Core material on the FE Core YouTube channel. I, I, I don't have any control or at least I do have control of the channel but I I don't know who is muted. I actually don't know how to mute people, but uh, apart from that, um, you know, the, the the board of directors meeting, um, which is you know, maybe something that, that we can address also. Uh, um, and has no control of how his representatives discuss FE Core's goals. Well, <laughs> should I should I hold you personally responsible for everything that is said by uh, members of FE Core? Um, if it comes through the FE Core channel, then yes, then I am the end responsible person. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, so quotes that were made by, let's say, Bob Nodell at the FE conference, which were not posted on the FE Core thing, even though they were sitting up there representing FE Core, are you saying that those are not admissible? Um, if, as I said, if they're not coming through the FE Core channels, then they're, they're personal opinions by board directors. E even if he's sitting there representing FE Core personally, um, I'm not sure in which capacity he can represent FE Core at a flattered convention. You know, um, I could actually probably bring it up for you. I can bring you up the quote too. But uh, where was it? Where was it? Uh, I don't remember exactly which conference it was at. Hold on a second. I, I think it's the 2017 in rally where we announced that we were going to form FE Core. Right. So, would you consider that speaking in the capacity of FE Core? No. No. Because we're not officially a business then there yet. We only announced our formation. Interesting. Okay. Would uh, would you consider uh, quotes from people of FE Core during uh, testing? performed by FE Core as admissible. Um, and I think you mean with admissible that uh, I'm not responsible for it, but if they're done during our tests, then yeah, sure, you know, 
we're responsible for anything that uh, that happens during those tests. Okay, now, as I understand it, FE Corps uh, has stated numerous times that they are not a flat earth organization, nor are they trying to prove flat earth. Am I correct? Correct. Then why was it that Bob said during your Lake Balaton tests, Bob specifically said flat earth confirmed? Well, that's his opinion. That's his belief. But is he not is he not speaking in the capacity of FE Core? No, no, he's he's speaking his opinion as a director. He's not representing. Okay, you. when is his opinion to be considered something well, that is spoken a, for there, FE Core? There's a difference between the the individual and the body corporate. You know, the the corporate body FE Core needs to, um, um, you know, put out these statement statements to its own channels to make it bound to FE Core. The personal opinions of board directors are irrelevant to the opinion of the corporation. Excellent. Okay, so nothing that Bob says can be held as FE Core unless he says it actually uh, in some capacity uh, on the website of FE Core. Is that what you're saying? Correct, yes. Okay, now, either this means that Mike Cavanaugh is an incompetent president of an organization and has loose cannon board members running around falsely stating the goals and achievements of FE Core as being specifically flat earth in nature and yet somehow still remains to be a board member or this is a clear sign that this is not a corporation where anybody is truly in control nor is concerned with providing factual, reviewed, or solid information, which leads one to believe that there are other motives to consider. First of all, let me, let me let you know that the entire board of directors is here for Field Engineer Corps. Um, we have Steve Torrance, we have Sandor Zelski, and, and we have uh, Karen B. Uh, Karen Endicott with us. We have Mike Cavanaugh, uh, we have Jaron Campanella, we have Rick Hummer, and of course myself, which comprises the seven members of the uh, Board of Directors for FE Corps. The individual works of the Flat Earther staff of FE Core quite clearly defines that the works of FE Core are governed by those claiming Flat Earth and other anti-establishment views. All of the board members, at one time or another, have been clearly shown their claims are wrong, disingenuous, and in some cases, blatantly fraudulent. But those explanations are cleanly removed and the submitters blocked and dismissed as trolls, paid shills, and liars, clearly displaying a lack of interest by the FE Core staff in factual results, honest experimentation, or even fact-based opinions and professional advice. The experiments being performed by FE Core, to those familiar with the subject matter claimed by Flat Earthers, are in direct support of and intended to prove the Earth to be flat, not rotating, and surrounded by a flowing invisible ether. Let me again take a moment to play the words of FE Core board member and avid Flat Earther from the Globebusters Flat Earth YouTube group and Seventh Day Truth Seekers channels, Bob Nodell, as he explains the intent of the FE Core experiments during the Flat Earth Conference as an FE Core panel member and speaker for the group. All of these will be used to prove that there not only is there no curvature to the Earth, there is no forward motion to the Earth, as well as uh, the absolute existence of the ether that Einstein eliminated with his special theory of relativity. These are the five projects currently listed on the FE Core website. Force the level, long distance microwave transmission, and the laser experiments are 100% designed with the goal to conclude the Earth's physical shape as a plane. Despite creative word usage, such as does not match the geoid and testing convexity. The mechanical gyro motion testing is a test where FE Core wishes to conclude that the Earth does not rotate by measuring the motion of a gyroscope and the Aries failure test as an attempt to measure ether with a method that was obviously unsuccessful given what the test has become named. A quick examination of these tests reveal that the claims and results are or will be intentionally biased and FE Core will easily draw conclusions which do not conform with reality by either omitting testable natural phenomena, dismissing known tried and true facts about the function of devices or deliberately poor methodology. Oh. 
The laser tests were performed with the intention of showing three results. The first was to have a laser be seen over a great distance, which any meteorologist, physicist, or even amateur willing to perform the experimentation will tell you is in itself not a valid test to conclude the shape of the Earth, since something as common as refraction will distort the test and give a false result over a great distance. Yet seeing the glare alone was considered a victory for Flat Earth, as stated by FE Corps board member Bob Nodell, while being a commentator for the FE Corps Lake Boliton tests. There it is, Earth proven flat. It looks Thank like you. the green needs to go to the right just a little bit. The second intent, according to FE Corps president and Flat Earther Mike Cavanaugh, was to use the laser mount to determine left to right horizon curvature. This was stated in my discussion with him. <clears throat> we are, you are trying to find out if the laser hit the target at the same height as the, the laser emitter is above the same, uh, uh, the same uh, surface, which in this case is the water, correct? Well, theoretically, you can still say that we're assuming that we're having the beam at the same height at the reference location, but we confirm that when we do a horizontal uh, shift on, uh, you know, to the target location. A horizontal the shift? That has nothing to do with height. Yes, of course, because, you know, if there's more drop between those two locations, then, uh, you know, the result of that would be that there would be a, a difference in elevation of the target. However, nowhere on the site or results documentation was that either performed, set up, or given the location of the distant teams, even physically possible to carry out, as he described. And yet another additional intent, which was only brought up in my discussion with Mike, but was never mentioned in the results documentation, on the website, or even in post-event interviews with his fellow Flat Earthers, was the apparent illumination of targets at the distant end of 20 plus kilometer tests, which Mike states he got very accurate results on, made photographs of, but again, never mentions them or has ever produced a photo of this occurrence. But what was the ultimate goal of the test? Was it to see the laser at the other end or was it to hit a target? To hit a target. And did you hit a target? Yes. At 22 kilometers? At 20 and 27, if I remember correctly, it's 27 or 29. Now, the, there are two target photos in the results document, but those, as confirmed by Mike Cavanaugh, are of small short-range tests and are of no real value from either location. And the critique that I offered about the methodology of leveling the laser, which Mike specifically states multiple times was irrelevant at the emitter location, displays at a minimum the incompetence of those performing these tests. And here is FE Corps board member Sandor, with the last name I can't pronounce, stating the summary goal of the FE Corps laser tests. With all the other discoveries and all the other observations that have been made that seem to uh, completely go along with the idea of a flat plane. So, uh, is there any other areas on this that, that uh, you want to cover a little bit more in depth, uh, the Sandora mic? I think we pointed out that uh, our best uh, or main result is that uh, we can already disprove by these seven experiments uh, that the WGS84 model, uh, which is, I think, a milestone uh, and uh, will keep uh, researching for further distances uh, and we will not stop until we prove that lakes are flat, oceans are flat, and therefore Earth is flat. I think that's the two most important things to prove uh, on flat Earth, uh, that uh, Earth is uh, not curved and also that it's not spinning or moving anywhere. So these two experiments uh, are definitive for the shape of, of our, of our uh, place. Yeah. But in the meantime, you know, I, I would just call on people to use their common sense and yeah. figure that if we are darting through the galaxy in all these different... This experiment, also intent on claiming the Earth to have a flat surface, was a test using surveying equipment. However, the test was a general failure, which sometimes happens because it proved neither a curved or a flat earth, but rather offered a concave result, which brought discussion from actual surveyors 
who stated that either the equipment wasn't calibrated correctly or the calculations afterwards were performed improperly. While quite impressive in design and construction, the gyroscope developed by FE Core is by far not capable of cleanly detecting that which they wish to detect with it. And in that will be easy to claim that the Earth doesn't rotate because the detection from the gyroscope will be negative. Additionally, the mechanical gyroscope built by FE Core claims to discredit the Foucault gyroscope from the 1800s which is reported to have detected the Earth's rotation by measuring the precession on its two axes. However, FE Core made the decision not to reproduce the Foucault gyro and instead built a far less sensitive one. The first of the experiments that has yet to be performed is another attempt to claim the Earth's surface to be flat by first dismissing natural phenomena and making unsubstantiated claims regarding radio transmission. In an interview with FE Corps president and flat earther Mike Cavanaugh, he stated that refraction has no effect on radio waves. Light curves with the earth, you know, and that's ridiculous. Um, or refracts with the, with, uh, with, um, uh, along the curve, so to speak, like, like what metabunk.org uh, suggests. Um, but uh, they're going to have a hard time because we're going to add uh, some, some extra validation to this laser experiment by doing the same distance, but now with microwave transmissions point to point from the same elevation heights as, um, as we did with laser observations. And a microwave doesn't refract. A microwave is point to point communication. And if we, were, if we are able and we are going to be able to establish a communication over that 40 kilometers distance, then we will have not only a point-to-point -point communication over an impossible distance over a curve, but also validated our, our laser experiments. Now that it's not bending around any curved surface or whatever, because a microwave doesn't do that. A microwave is a straight line from point A to point B. You know, there's no way around it. You can say that a light beam might refract around a curve, but microwaves don't do that. They are not susceptible to refraction. Uh, I know that there are the, the, if, if you get a constant transmission, you know, a solid transmission, then, you know, there's no way you can make the excuse that it's a Fresnel zone or, or whatever, or a reflection. That's just point-to-point -point communication because microwave is two-way communication, you know? Right. You, you're sending and receiving at the same time which is categorically false, as radio waves, similar to light, are forms of radiation. So that which can affect light can also affect radio waves. Mike Cavanaugh even acknowledges this during my discussion with him as he acknowledges the function of tropospheric refraction radio connections. Are you, are you familiar with uh, tropo radio? No. Okay, well, it's tropos tropospheric uh, 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 scattering where basically a radio shot is shot upwards and it bounces off the well not straight up of course but at a specific angle and it bounces yeah, off the I, troposphere I've heard, I've heard the face uh, tropospheric scattering yes mm -hmm. well it's 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 a uh, what do you call it it's a it's a great technique for uh, very long uh, radio things uh, radio shots not to mention anyone who performs a quick google search can find plenty of articles and charts and test data to confirm that radio waves are definitely subject to atmospheric distortion and refraction. And if anything is true, radio waves at certain frequencies can penetrate obstructions which life can't pass through. Which is why you can shut your doors and windows, but your boombox will still play your favorite radio station, your mobile phone will still be able to make calls, and your computer will still have a data connection with your Wi-Fi router elsewhere in your house. And lastly, there is to be a reproduction of the test known as Aries failure, which on the surface is a visual test, but ultimately it is a heavily mathematical test, which FE cores depending more on the viewers accepting FE cores statements about the results rather than checking or even having the ability to check up on it themselves. Something that should also be mentioned is the Aries failure test is called a failure 
because of its inconclusive results for that which was tested. The intent of this video is not to halt experimentation by flat earthers, as we have all become callous to the dishonesty of or misrepresentation of their results. The intent of this video is to clearly identify that FE Core is 100% a flat earther organization with an anti-establishment agenda intent on the spread of propaganda against the common good and progress of mankind. I personally, through proper channels, will be submitting a Form 13909 Tax Exemption Organization Complaint Form to eoclass at irs.gov, outlining the fact that the nonprofit organization FE Corps is operating in violation of the Articles of Incorporation, Section 2, Item C for propaganda, and will be researching the proper complaint methods to ensure that they do not get 501c3 status, that it is known that this was done intentionally by Mike Cavanaugh and the other members of FE Corps. Additionally, I am formally requesting a digital copy of FE Corps annual required form 990 and 1023. This is my right as a citizen of the United States to receive that information. Please also understand that this is a requirement regardless of whether or not the organization has 501 anything status. The FE Corps organization is required to comply with this request as they have not made the documents publicly available on their website or FE Corps publicly accessible outlets. The IRS does allow you to charge a copy fee of 20 cents per page, but that is only if I request a paper copy, which I do not require, and only when that processing fee is outlined prior to my request on your website, which it is not. There have been two tax deadlines since the conception of FE Corps, April of 2018 and April of 2019 respectively. So there should be two editions of these documents. Please be aware that the IRS regulations state that they can impose a penalty of 20 US dollars per day up to a maximum of $10,000 as a fine for each day you refuse to provide this information after my request. These were the documents that I had requested from Mike Cavanaugh in the back chat and he openly refused to provide. I hope this video has been informative. Y'all have a nice day. Oh my God. I would like to offer an educated opinion regarding what FE Corps President Mike Cavanaugh stated and considered to be the act of trolls during the Lake Balaton laser experiments. It was stated that the police were called to the FE Corps crew while performing their laser tests. Mike Cavanaugh was certain that this was from those trying to stop the experimentation during the live stream. He very clearly described that FE Corps thwarted the police problems with permits for the test. While I do not support feeble attempts to disturb experimentation, it is a bit arrogant to claim that this was purely the act of trolls watching the live stream. First, because of the fact that when it was actually live, the live stream was only viewed by those who were invited to view it. Second, there was very little public information about the actual addresses being used. And third, it is highly doubtful that among the folks who were watching, that anybody spoke the language, knew the phone number of, or could even possibly submit such a police complaint. Mike Cavanaugh and the FE Corps crew seem to be ignorant of the fact that having a permit for something does not mean that the surrounding community is informed or cool with the activity. The entire Lake Balaton is bordered with residences and businesses, and it would be ignorant at best to think of the hundreds of meters of coastline which FE Corps blasted with the laser that night that none of the residents of the homes in that area made formal complaints to the police. And by the way, I also know why at Lake Balaton, the green laser team saw the blue laser, but the blue laser team didn't see the green. Feel free to contact me if you'd like to know why that was. It has to do with page 13 of your results document.